Okay. Well, I'm Miss Miller again. I was on unemployment. You guys should pick up that, that way of running it.
if you look at those 14,000 to 15,000 people that are on it, me, go meet some of them in the hospital and, and the care that they get. But the one thing I want to remember and point out to you, that that total cost of that program, $37 million, that would be the cost for a year. We get $100 million back from the federal government. So we stop that program. You're taking out of the system in this state better than $100 million. Where does that money go? It doesn't go, it doesn't go to you and me. It goes to hospitals, providers. That's where the money's going. So if there's abuse, the abuse is there. Now, the other thing I can tell you about this is that we do have a problem in main care, and that is we have a situation where close to 30% of the money we spent is spent on very few people in main care. We have people who go to the doctor and they go doctor shopping. We've tried to shop, stop that. We have not been successful. We need to do that. We have people who run, they, they get a cold, they go to the emergency room. We need to stop those things. Those are the things that where we can put the brakes on main care so it doesn't drive the cost up. I agree with the governor. We can't sustain the increased cost of main care to provide services to a few people. And by that, I'm talking maybe, maybe 5,000 people are the abusers, in my opinion. It's not illegal, perfectly legal, under federal law, under state law. But they're abusing it by making use of it when they shouldn't have to. And we can do that if we create, for example, doctor's offices that are open on weekends, basically facilities where the people can go to with their children over the weekends so they don't have to run at the emergency room. That is the most expensive care we have, and we need to solve it. One, one big issue. Well, just to go along with what he said. To go along with what the representative just said. Back in January, we were getting reimbursed by the federal government to 73%, almost 74%. Today, it's 63%. They've dropped it way down. The other thing. It's not a matter of cutting. Do you know something? I can walk right out of here and say, let's continue the way we are. And I would do nothing. In April, it's not a matter of cutting a program. It's April 1, the state of Maine will run out of money. That is not cutting. That is overspending. Now, we knew this. And you're right, there's one gentleman back there that was absolutely right. I should have vetoed the budget. And I'll tell you, it won't get by me a second time. It should have been vetoed, and they should have stayed there all summer if they had to. But we gave in, and I said, okay, they're saying, well, we'll come back, we'll fix it in the fall. Well, here's the fall. Now we're into the winter. And even worse, if it's not resolved by the 15th to the 20th of January, it's going to be a half a million dollars a day that we're going to be expending beyond our ability to pay. Because after the 15th, we have to have an implementation date no later than April 1st, or it's a half a million dollars a day that we're spending, that we don't have. Yes, ma'am. I've heard a little bit about your proposed plans for nursing homes and uh, boarding homes, etc. What are your plans for um, level four home-based care? I'm all, I'm all for it. It's a matter of developing it further than it has. We have some, some programs seem to be working fairly well. Others don't work nearly as well. In the in the larger communities, it seems we have a lot more success than in rural areas. And in the state of Maine, one size does not fit all because it's such a sparsely populated state. Half the population is in three or four cities. And it's that you can make a lot of programs work there much easier. In, in rural areas, it's very, very difficult. Are they in any danger of losing benefits? I don't see it right now. The, the biggest problem right now is because we get no federal funding to the PNMI. I'm in Plotida, and those who know me know I've always been a spokesperson for people with special needs, the handicapped. 
my daughter is sitting here burning to ask you a question. <coughs> but I want to know, how will this cut, if any, affect people with special needs? Because some of them are worried they will no longer be able to go to the centers where they learn daily living skills. The funding has been cut for supported family where they can have workers showing them independent living skills. And they are asking me, Mrs. Steele, what can we do? Are we going to lose our program? And I said, well, I don't know. <coughs> Institutionalized programs are not being touched. They're like the nursing homes. Those have been, those are the, the, when you have to prioritize the most vulnerable, we put them as the most vulnerable in the, in the system. And then we get into the assisted living. And from there on down, it's, in main care, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. But you see, in the valley, or the whole valley here, parents keep their, people with special needs at home. That's just the way we are. Right. And, and whether or not you have care at home or in a center in town, you know, that's part of the whole mix of what we're trying to cover. But I will tell you from my perspective, the, the handicapped and the elderly are very, very special. We want to try to do everything we possibly can to protect them. There's not, believe me, it's not a matter of we're going to take the 220 million and go spend it someplace else. It just isn't there. My daughter has a question, and if you would just bear with her, you can ask her. My question is about the Olympics, and we haven't been going to the Olympics at all. She has been told the funding was cut for special. Sable, you have your assisted living, you have schools, and it's down here in relation to the total picture. Yes. If I had a, if, if it was up to me, the revenue sharing would go to assisted living before we go to the, to the towns. It's just the real world. Well, I... <laughs> It should stay the same, but what you're in Augusta, nothing stays the same. Realistically, I doubt it. What's going to happen to these uh, elderlies? Like 80% of them have Alzheimer's today. Uh, what's going to happen to them in a year from now or two years from now where they need to be into a nursing home? And if they... I, I'll be very honest with you. Until... We fix the structural problem in our budgeting. We never know from one month to the next how much we're going to have in the till to pay. So it needs to be dealt with on a structural basis. We need to toughen the regulations and we've got to make sure the limited resources go to the people that need it most. Yes, ma'am. I, I didn't hear you. I says, what about people that don't pay their main income tax? I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of those. I know. I just looked at the the revenue people just sent me uh, some documents that's uh, between my office and the attorney general's to write off uh, the deadbeats. I mean, it's a lot of money. Yes. A lot of money. And and but you know, I will say this: the attorney general's office and the revenue office. We'll go after them for as, as long as they think there's anything left. But we all know you can't get blood out of a turnip. Um, yes, sir. Incidentally, to, to 
to give you an update on that, we just got uh, word from the attorneys that they're going back to federal court and get trying to get the amount that they pay every year down because there's three or four companies, no-name brands that have come in, and they're not part of this. And so they're saying that they've lost revenues, therefore they don't need to pay as much. sharing for the coming year in my budget. I have done a comprehensive budget back in February and now we are addressing the one issue that's on the table because everything else were hands off. That doesn't mean that revenue sharing isn't going to be affected. I'm not talking about revenue sharing. I'm talking about people that have lost services and that they will go to their town to try and get help I would say that uh, I can't say that for sure, but I will tell you that, that there's a few towns that could get affected with general assistance. There are two towns in particular where the state's reimbursing 90% and we're recommending that they stay at the 50%. Most of the towns up here are at the 50%. General assistance, absolutely. You can only spend what you got, sir. You know, once you run out, you run out. I, I went to the wall on it trying to get the legislature 
to understand that this meeting is unnecessary if we had done it the first time but we refused to do it and quite frankly i'm concerned with what i hear these magical things that happen that are going to happen overnight it doesn't work that way with the federal government up here and the people up here recognize that I've been up here and ma'am I've been up here a lot in the last 15 years we ran three scores in the county we I understand people up here and I work with them and I, I understand that I could be it'd be hell freezes over before you'd ever support a Republican but the fact that the fact the fact of the matter is it is where we are, and I am I'm being honest with the people in this room that I didn't I fought not to get that budget passed. I wanted it fixed. And I will tell you that gentleman made a good point. In the future I will veto when I know the money's not there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 